Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. Today we're strapping on our survival gear, but not for a typical hike through the woods. No, we're headed back into the wilderness and the heart-stopping, bone-crushing, and utterly twisted world of Wrong Turn 2 Dead End. And let me tell you, this sequel is crazier than a Cactus Jack hardcore match. And just like a hardcore match, Wrong Turn 2 throws us into the ring of horror where the stakes are higher, the danger is more visceral, and the unexpected lurks behind every tree. Starring talents like Henry Rollins, Erica Learson, and Texas Battle, the cast brings a mix of intensity and vulnerability to the foray, making us question who will make it out of the woods in one piece. And under the directional prowess of Joe Lynch, Known for his knack for blending horror with dark humor, Wrong Turn 2 promises a wild ride into the heart of terror. But it is time to lace up our boots, throw on our best horror commentary attire, and step into the gore-soaked arena of mutant mayhem. Let's head to the ring. Years after the events of the first Wrong Turn film, reality show contestant Kimberly is driving through West Virginia looking for the location of her next project. While driving, she accidentally hits a teenager who kind of just comes out of nowhere. She gets out to check on him, but he turns out to be one of the inbred cannibals who literally bites her lips off. They didn't waste any time here. And I've got to say, you can really see the influence of Saw on this movie. The gore and violence really takes a step up. Kimberly tries to escape, but runs into the surviving Three Finger. This little run-in leads to a complete bifurcation, as Three Finger splits her in half with an axe. He and another cannibal named Brother drag her two halves away. So. The reality show being filmed is called The Apocalypse, Ultimate Survivalist. It's basically Survivor with some tactical twists. But instead of Jeff Probst, you get Henry Rollins playing a former Marine named Dale Murphy as the host. I am retired Marine Colonel Dale Murphy. Welcome to The Apocalypse. Ready to tag in for a ringside seat to horror and wrestling mayhem? Don't miss out on the spine-tingling action. Hit that subscribe button and let's make sure you never miss a bone-crushing review or a jump scare commentary. Join the WWH universe. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. Next, we are introduced to the contestants. You have Amber, a war veteran, Elena, a model, Jake, a former football player, Jonesy, who is a skateboarder, and Nina, who is a graphic artist. And taking the place of Kimberly is producer Mara, who is also the girlfriend of the show's creator, M. As the game starts, Three Finger and another cannibal named Pa kill members of the television crew and kidnap Dale. Something else of note, Nina is played by Erica Learson, who was also in the 2003 remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. After finishing one of the tasks, Mara sees M cheating on her with Elena and has a breakdown, understandably. But Mara and Nina then go to a nearby cabin to look for a phone. This house is just as disgusting as the one from the first movie. You're kidding. No, you're crazy. Okay. Hello? While looking around, they hear people arrive and go into hiding. It's like we've been here before. What they see, though, is very, very different. They see a female cannibal named Ma give birth to a deformed baby. Her daughter, named Sister, sees the girls hiding, forcing them to run back into the woods where Mara is hit in the head with a hatchet thrown by Pa. Nina then goes to look for the others as the cannibals collect Mara's body and use it as a hood ornament for their truck. Back at the lake, Elena is now alone after her escapades with M. She hears a noise in the woods before Sister emerges and slashes her back until she dies. Meanwhile, Pa and Ma hijack the RV used as headquarters and capture him in the process, pinning him to the wall with an arrow. <laughs> D 
still manages to escape and fights Three Finger for a few minutes until he gets all ten of his fingers on a shotgun. He shoots the seemingly invincible cannibal with the weapon, knocking him into the lake. He then comes across the family's cabin, but he doesn't find any mutants inside. Instead, he finds the Pepto-drinking gas station attendant. And we get some of the backstory that I was missing from the last movie. The mutations were caused by inbreeding mixed with some toxic waste being dumped into the river from an abandoned paper mill 30 years ago. Further revelation tells us that this old man is the father of Three Finger, Ma, and Pa, as well as the cannibals killed in the first movie. Gotta stay close to my youngins. He tries to kill Dale for revenge, but meets his own end when Dale blows him up with a stick of dynamite. Yeah, I don't think Pepto can cure that symptom. Meanwhile, the other contestants, including Jake, Amber, and Jonesy, are sitting at their tribal council looking area. They're eating some meat that Amber and Jonesy had found a little while earlier from a campsite, and then Nina returns, frantically explaining what happened to her. These hillbilly freaks! They killed Mara! and they tied her to the hood of their truck! Of course, they think it's all part of the game, but then they see a recognizable tattoo on the meat. It's the tattoo that Kimberly had on her leg. So yes, they're eating Kimberly's leg, and that's nasty. Running back into the woods, they come across brother and sister and fight them. Nina, still scared, leaves the group and falls into this pit where Jake later rescues her. Amber and Jonesy also get away, but get caught in these snares and are hung by their feet. Pa and brother then show up to have some cannibalistic fun. Brother then shoots an arrow, killing both of them with just one shot, as we just started to get some character development out of those two. My mother always used to say I'd live for... Nina and Jake then enter the abandoned mill to look for the others. Inside they find abandoned cars of previous victims and hear M screams coming from the RV. Jake goes to find him, but it's actually just a live stream. And on that live stream, Jake sees Ma decapitate M, making her own little version of a snuff film. Nina and Jake are then captured and held by the freaky family. The next day, Nina wakes up to find herself in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre dinner scene. And there are elements from both the original TCM and part two, making this family seem a little domesticated, just like the cannibalistic Sawyers. But luckily, Dale sneaks into the compound and disrupts family dinner, killing brother and sister with an arrow he fitted with a stick of dynamite. <laughs> He frees Nina and Jake, but is killed by Ma and Pa, who are furious about the death of their children. <laughs> Nina escapes, but Jake ends up in a room with a huge meat grinder. Ma and Pa attack him, but Nina isn't one to just abandon people, so she comes back and knocks both of the nasty mutants into the grinder, killing them in a very gruesome fashion. Nina and Jake find Kimberly's red Mustang and drive away to safety, but we're not done quite yet. Surely you didn't think that Three Finger was actually dead, did you? Well, he's not. We see him then coddling that newborn cannibal known as Three Toes, real original, and bottle feeding him some toxic waste from the river. He also gives the baby a human finger to nom on as the movie ends. <laughs> This is the last movie in the franchise that's decent, in my opinion, other than the reboot. From here, it goes into full torture porn status at the expense of likable characters and story. And the little story that you do get from those movies doesn't even really make sense within the canon of the first two. They're honestly just a mess. But let's focus on this movie for now. There's a lot to talk about, both good and bad. But first, we have to take a short break, so stick around for more WWH action. If you're looking to save 20% off of your entire order from Redcon 1, I have a deal for you. All you have to do is type in the code ANDREWDREAMER at checkout and you will immediately save 20% off your order. Head over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash ANDREWDREAMER 
to check out some of my merchandise. There are a lot of cool designs and you can pick one up for yourself. Go check it out. Also, head over to Patreon to become a member of the WWH universe. There are a lot of really cool perks and we would love to have you. Welcome back. Let's continue forward deeper into the wilderness of West Virginia as we look at the positives. This movie does not take itself seriously. Yeah, it's played straightforward, but there's a lot of dark humor in it, which is something that Joe Lynch is really good at. It's ridiculous, but a fun kind of ridiculous. And we do get more backstory on the cannibal family. And that was an issue that I had with the first film. And I like the inclusion of that here. Bringing back the gas station attendant and making him part of the family, I think was a really good plot point. Um, the film excels in practical effects, delivering gruesome and realistic gore. The scenes involving mutant attacks and the aftermath showcases a dedication to practical effects, reminiscent of a lot of really old horror movies. Henry Rollins as Colonel Dale Miller is a standout. His portrayal of a tough, unyielding military figure adds depth to his character, elevating the film with his commanding presence. The incorporation of a reality TV survivalist theme adds a unique twist, blending the natural horror of the wilderness with man-made challenges. Also, I'm a big fan of Survivor, so this was right up my alley. But as much as I enjoyed this movie, it does have some issues. The influences are glaringly obvious, from Texas Chainsaw Massacre to Saw to Halloween Resurrection even. It's blatant, and I would have preferred it a bit more subtlety. And despite it taking place in the same location, it looks nothing like the woods from the first movie. A nitpick, yes, but it stuck out to me for sure. While some characters are well-developed, others fall into stereotypical roles and lack depth. This imbalance results in varying levels of investment in the fates of the characters for me. They attempted to add some depth, but then the characters just died before the words even got said. At times, the dialogue even feels forced, and some script choices just come off as cliché. And certain plot elements follow a very predictable formula seen in several other horror films. The survivalist challenge turning into a fight for your life against mutants and traps just feels familiar and lacks some originality. Again, it's just like one of the big Saw games. Just with more cannibalism. I'm sure not everybody will have an issue with that, but I found it a bit distracting at times. And when compared to the original Wrong Turn, I found Wrong Turn 2 to be more focused on delivering shock value rather than maintaining the suspenseful atmosphere of the first film, which is something I really liked about it. While the wilderness echoes with the screams of the survivalist contestants and the mutants alike, Wrong Turn 2 isn't without its shadows. The uneven character development, occasional predictability, and comparisons to its predecessor leave certain aspects of the journey feeling somewhat unexplored. But overall, it's a fun ride that gets less fun after this. If you all want to see me review the entire franchise, let me know down in the comments. Also, just go ahead and let me know what are your thoughts on this movie. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any WWH action. We have a lot more coming your way soon, but until then, my name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.